Okay, this little plastic gear is the one that gives the trouble. Um, it's plastic and over time, you know, sometimes you'll jam into uh, a piece of metal too hard and when you jam into the metal too hard it binds and that breaks the teeth off of this. Well, and then we remove the gear and if it won't come off very easily, you can use a screwdriver to ease it up. Next we're going to have to remove this retaining clip from the uh, shaft of the motor. You use either um, clip pliers or you can use needle nose pliers. I'm going to use needle nose. And that did it. And the gear just comes off. And the motor shaft also has a key on it. One of the things you want to make sure you do is hold on to that uh, metal key. You don't want to lose that because we're going to need that for the uh, belt drive installation. Okay, coming back to the uh, uh, spindle where we removed the spanner nut earlier, there's a metal sleeve and that just comes off. And it's also keyed. So you want to place that aside. Okay, for the next step we're going to remove the key from the shaft that held the gear. Place this in a cup with uh, all the other parts so that we don't lose it. And then there's a little plastic sleeve that's included in the kit and you want to push this on the tubing may be a tight fit this one sure is you push that all the way down until it rests on the bearing Apparently that plastic sleeve is used to keep this shaft from dropping down uh, because there's still gears inside the um, mill head. Um, if you're not ever going to use the uh, use those gears, you can remove them, and then you won't need this sleeve or that shaft. Okay, next we're going to take the uh, base plate and we're going to place it over the uh, spindle and over the shaft. And that's supposed to be held in place, but I see I'm getting a little bit of interference here somewhere. That's lifting it up. I'm going to check that before I go any further. Always look for the simple excuse first. Um, I was noticing as I played with this for a second that I had the edge of the plate over the spindle. I've moved it here to exaggerate it. Originally it was uh, back around here somewhere, but that was just enough cause that gap. Move it off to the side, it's flush. So, not a problem. Okay, so we rest that in place. And in the hardware package, they've included some nice uh, screws to uh, secure these in place. That's a four millimeter. Imagine it wouldn't be a bad idea to put some Loctite on these, but um, the plans don't mention it. 
Uh, apparently, uh, when these machines were assembled, they didn't do a whole lot of uh, Loctiting on any of the uh, nuts and bolts or screws. Um, because every one that I've taken off today has been live with no preparation. They all came off really easily. This is a three or four year old machine though, so... Um, some of them may have worked uh, loose over time. Now this is a slightly thinner plate than the original one that was used. Um, I had originally intended to use a spring-loaded um, tool that would act as the uh, spindle lock on the side, but it's too tall for this application so I'll have to come up with a plan B. Okay, next we're going to install the uh, large pulley onto the spindle. There's a uh, keyed slot in the pulley and that matches up with the key on the uh, spindle. I push that down as far as it would go. Okay, next we're going to put the um, spanner nut back on and it's going to turn the opposite way that we're used to. We're going to use that spindle lock rod. There, that's got it locked. It's not as nice as it was before, and I'm not sure it's going in quite as deep. But perhaps the uh, hole in the pulley is a little shallower. So we take the, the spanner. <laughs> and remember to go the right direction. Yeah, yeah, pop loose. Okay, part of the problem is the gear is not as far down as it ought to be. Hoping that this nut will drive it down a little further. You see that? I switch to a uh, Allen wrench because it would fit into the slot and give me some purchase. It's already dropped it down considerably. See if we can get the original fit. They're very positive now. Ok, 
Okay, next we're going to place a small pulley over the motor shaft. And the smaller of the two ends is the one that goes over the shaft. Now this uses a smaller Allen key. Okay, it's a 332nd. Okay, push it all the way down until the key is seated at the bottom. And I'm tightening the set screw. Next I'm going to remove this uh, plate. It's a number four, four millimeter. Uh, I'm going to mount the motor. and place on that. Before you put the uh, motor back in place, you're going to want to grab the timing belt. get it in place ahead of time. Make your life easier. Put this in place. Slip it over the end of the uh, smaller pulley as well. Put the uh, bolt back into the standoff. We have to align it because there's a little shoulder on it. Next step is to use a uh, friction washer on the handle. Take the handle off. Handle back on, don't lose the little spring. So tighten them down in place. It's a little bit of adjusting and flexing. The spring allows it to go to different positions so that you can tighten easier. Adjust the belt tension. And we're going to install the uh, belt cover. That should still allow you room on the side for that spindle lock. Okay, and the last step is to put in the uh, replacement cable tie. Now let's see what we got. I'm going to raise the mill head back up. Make sure I don't have any wrenches or anything stuck in any of the places. Make sure the spindle's turning free. Turn on the uh, power switch and let's see what we got. Now, if we want to change the gears, all we have to do is Loosen up the motor plate, take the tension off the belt, remove the belt cover, move the belts around, and try the other gear. So we've got quite an increased speed range. 